I'm going to document the process to do a complete oil change and fluid service on all Harley Davidson Softail models built between the year 2000 and 2017. I'm going to be changing the engine oil and the transmission fluid and the primary fluid as well as the engine oil filter. I'm going to start on the right side of the bike and change the engine oil and the transmission fluid and then we'll go around to the left side of the bike and change the primary fluid in the engine oil filter. I'll be showing the drain plug locations as well as the fill locations. I'm going to bring the camera down and show the drain plug location. To locate the drain plug location for the oil tank, the easiest way is to start at the passenger foot peg at the right side of the bike and then go underneath the motorcycle from that point. And right here is a 5 8 inch hex plug it's located in a recessed pocket inside the frame cross member. If you remove that plug, the engine oil tank will drain. To locate the drain plug location for the transmission, the easiest way is to start at the transmission cover and then go under the motorcycle from that point. And you'll see these two black cylinders that are the shock absorbers for the soft tail. Up above the shock absorbers in between them at the front edge if you look up to the underneath of the transmission case you'll see another 5 8 inch hex plug it's kind of deep up in here and you'll need an extension to reach it but if you remove that plug that will drain the transmission fluid before we remove the drain plug for the engine or the transmission to drain the fluid we're going to want to open the filler cap so that air can enter the transmission or the oil tank as they drain. For the engine oil tank, we simply remove this cap. And we can leave it in place, and that will allow air to enter the oil tank as the engine oil drains. For the transmission, the filler cap on a six-speed is located right here behind the transmission and on a 5-speed it will be located on the leading edge of the transmission cover. In either case we want to remove the filler plug before we remove the drain plug to allow the transmission fluid to properly drain. I'm going to put the camera back up and document the process to drain the engine oil and transmission fluid. As I showed earlier to allow air into the oil tank as we drain it we're going to remove the filler cap and we can just leave it in place and to allow air into the transmission we're going to use a 5 8 inch allen to remove the filler cap for the transmission. And we can just leave that in place also. Now I'm going to use a 5 8 inch socket to break the drain plug free for the oil tank and then I'll use the same 5 8 inch socket and an extension to break the drain plug free for the transmission. Then I'll get an oil pan under the bike and remove the two plugs. You want to take a close look at your drain plugs to see if the magnets have captured any metal particulates out of either system. A couple little flecks of metal on either plug is not a reason for concern, but if there's a big puff ball of metal particulates, you'd want to get your bike to a shop and have it checked out to see why that's happening. The fluids have finished draining. I stood the bike up to allow any of the fluids that had settled to the kickstand side of the bike to come to the center and drain out. Then I leaned the bike back onto the side stand. 
Right now I'm going to replace the engine oil drain plug and the transmission drain plug. Then I'll show the process to replace the engine oil and transmission fluid. I replaced both the drain plugs and now I'm going to add 3 quarts of engine oil. I'm going to be running Mobile One 20W50 full synthetic. Uh, it's for V-twin applications. You want to verify that whatever oil you're going to run is specifically formulated for a V-twin engine. The friction modifiers uh, and heat tolerances will be different in an oil formulated for a V-twin engine because it's a more extreme environment. I've added three quarts of engine oil to the oil tank. After I've replaced the engine oil filter, I'll bring the motorcycle up to operating temperature and then check the level on the dipstick. And if I need to add more to bring it up to the full level, I'll do so at that point. But with three quarts, you'll be within half a quart of the full level. Next, I'm gonna be adding gear oil to the transmission. Some people will run 20W50 in the transmission if they're running full synthetic oil. If you're running full synthetic, you can run 20W50 in all three systems, in the engine, in the transmission, and in the primary. I'm going to be running gear oil in the transmission simply because the transmission seems to operate a little bit more quietly during shifts and shift a little bit more smoothly with gear oil. In this case, it's a matter of your preference if you want the convenience of running the same fluid in all three systems or the added benefit of shifting more quietly with gear oil in the transmission. I'm going to be running Valvoline Full Synthetic 75W140 gear oil. There's 32 ounces in the bottle. You only need to put about 24 ounces in the transmission. So I'm going to leave about 8 ounces in the bottle and then I'll check the level later on the dipstick to verify that that's the correct amount. Okay, we're finished on this side of the bike. I'm going to reinstall the transmission filler plug and dipstick and we'll go around to the other side of the bike and we'll drain and replace the primary fluid and we'll remove and replace the engine oil filter. Alright, I'm going to remove the primary access cover by removing the five Torx head screws that are holding it on and then I'll bring the camera down and show the drain plug location for the primary. To locate the primary drain plug, start at the primary access opening and go under the bike. And you'll see the primary drain plug right here. It's a 5 8 inch hex plug on some motorcycles and on some models it will be a Torx bit plug. After you've removed the primary access cover to allow the primary to vent, you can remove that plug and the primary will begin draining. Remember to check the magnet on your primary plug to see if there's an unusual amount of metal buildup.
The primary's finished draining and I've reinstalled the plug. Now I'm going to add about 26 ounces of 20W50 engine oil to the primary. There's various ways to do this. Um, if you've just got a normal narrow funnel, you can usually find a place to get it in enough to add the fluid. Another method I've found, if you don't want to buy a specialty funnel, um, just about any funnel that you can buy at a parts store at Walmart will work. This particular one is a uh, diesel exhaust fluid funnel, so it has kind of a funny shape to it. If you get a razor knife and cut the funnel, uh, we're going to actually not use the narrow part. We're going to use the lip to add the fluid to the primary. I'm going to cut this funnel real quick and show you how that works. Okay, we don't need this, but this remaining part makes a perfect trough to pour the fluid in through the primary access opening. Okay, I'm going to reinstall the primary access cover and then we'll move forward and replace the engine oil filter. When you're installing the Torx bits to hold the primary access cover in place, you want to tighten them in a star pattern to prevent warping the cover or crimping your gasket. We're going to move up now to the front of the engine and remove and replace the engine oil filter. The engine oil filter is located here at the front of the engine. I'm going to be using an engine oil filter socket to remove it. Because of the location that Harley chose for the crankshaft position sensor, it may be necessary to notch your oil filter socket or to buy an oil filter socket that already has the notch removed. When we remove the oil filter, some of the oil is going to drain onto the engine cases, so sticking a rag underneath the oil filter before you remove it helps collect some of that oil that's going to drip. I'm also going to use part of an oil additive bottle as a trough to catch some of the oil that's going to drip out. I'm going to place an oil catch pan underneath the motorcycle so that I have a place to set the oil filter once I've removed it and to catch any oil that may drip from the front of the engine. After you've removed the old oil filter, wipe up any oil that's spilled and then the next step is to install a new oil filter. Apply a skim coat of fresh engine oil to the oil filter gasket surface and this will prevent the oil filter from getting stuck when it's time to remove it during the next oil change. After the oil filter gasket makes contact with the flange, you want to tighten the oil filter an additional half turn to three quarters of a turn. You don't want to over tighten it or it will be very difficult to remove it during the next oil change. If you want to use a Fram oil filter, the part number is PH6065B. Alright, that's it. Don't forget to start the bike and then after it's warmed up, check the levels on your dipsticks and top off any fluids you need to to reach the full level. Uh, if this video was helpful, leave a like. If you have any questions or comments, leave those down in the comments section. 
And uh, if you want to help me make more content like this, subscribe to the channel and click the little bell icon next to the subscribe button. Thanks again.